In this video, we are going to be responding to the claim that the Christian doctrine of the Trinity is actually based on earlier pagan trinities. Now, this is a very popular claim. Lots of non-Trinitarian groups, such as the Way International, Oneness Pentecostalism, Islam, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Christadelphianism, and some Hebraic Roots Movement groups, such as Yahweh's Restoration Ministry, and various breakaway groups of the Worldwide Church of God, followers of the late Herbert W. Armstrong, all reject the Trinity as being pagan in origin. They point to various and alleged similarities between the Christian Trinity and these so-called pagan trinities of other cultures. For example, under the heading Historical Development of the Trinity Doctrine, the Jehovah's Witnesses magazine The Watchtower states the following, quote, History confirms that the Trinity was borrowed from pagans and existed centuries before Jesus came to the earth. Long after his death, it was promoted by those who had been influenced by pagan philosophies and who had apostatized from the true worship of God as taught by Jesus and the Apostles. End quote. The Watchtower 1988, June 1st, page 18. Similarly, the Watchtower's magazine, Should You Believe in the Trinity, under the heading What Influenced It, i.e. the Trinity, states the following, quote, that is why, in the Encyclopedia of Religion and Ethics, James Hastings wrote, quote, In Indian religion, e.g., we meet the Trinitarian groups of Brahma, Siva and Vishnu, and in Egyptian religion, with the Trinitarian groups of Osiris, Isis and Horus, end quote, page 11. Page 12 of the same publication then goes on to argue that the church adopted these beliefs into their theology and hence apostatized from the truth. But is this really sound reasoning? Is there any truth to these common assertions? So let's just examine two of these so-called pagan trinities of Brahma, Siva and Vishnu and Osiris, Isis and Horus the triads that the Watchtower publication mentions there, and see if there is actually any real similarity with the Christian Trinity of one God of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. What are the actual facts? Brahma. This member of the Hindu triad is actually a four-headed God within a three-headed trinity. Originally, Brahma had five heads, but one was cut off. Misinformed people can often falsely misrepresent the Trinity as a three-headed monster. See, for example, the Watchtower's book, Let God Be True, 1946, pages 83 to 84. But to add even more heads onto the Trinity shows just how far they are willing to go in misrepresenting the doctrine. Brahma is also often depicted as having four arms. Shiva, a god of sensuality, often depicted again with four arms and who has a wife, Povati, and two children, Ganesha and Kartikeya, hardly comparable to the Christian god. Vishnu, often depicted as a pale blue being, again with four arms. What about the other example of Horus, Osiris and Isis? Can this be cited as evidence of having a similarity with the Christian trinity? No, it can't. Isis, a female goddess who becomes pregnant with Horus from a sexual act involving a golden phallus that is fashioned from the pieces of her dead, resurrected husband, Osiris. This was also an incestuous relationship as Isis and Osiris were brother and sister, born of the previously already existing sky god of Geb and Nut, the earth goddess. Osiris the husband of Isis, often depicted as a green-skinned man. Horus, the son of Isis and Osiris, with a human body and a falcon's head. Now the pagan trinities, so-called, of Brahma, Shiva and Vishnu, and Isis, Osiris and Horus, are just two examples. No doubt more could be cited. But under closer examination, all of these so-called pagan trinities differ from the Christian trinity in that they are three gods that were often only amongst the whole hierarchy and pantheon of other gods. Oftentimes these gods are sensual in nature, there's female deities, they are at enmity with each other, they have human characteristics. This is far different from the one God of Christianity with the love and harmony shown between Father, Son 
and Holy Spirit in the Bible. Now one of the major problems with the reasoning of non-Trinitarian groups, especially those which hold to the Bible in some way, is that by claiming that some vague similarities exist between the Trinity and some pagan triads, they actually condemn much of what they believe themselves as being pagan as well. What are you talking about, you might ask? Well, for example, if these people were to use the same reasoning that they were to judge the Trinity as pagan, then they would have to dismiss a whole load of other things that they believe in themselves as pagan. Some examples of this. The resurrection of Jesus. Remember, Osiris was resurrected in some sense. Believers' baptism. People claim that there were pagans that baptised prior to the Christians. Jesus' 12 disciples as being derived from the Zodiac, the number 12. The concept of the Logos found in the Gospel of John. The Greeks and pagans had a concept of the Logos prior to John. The flood accounts in Genesis, they were pagan flood accounts. The Persians had a concept of a Satan type figure. The Lord's Supper, the creation accounts, biblical terms such as Jesus being the rock of salvation the slain Lamb of God, all had pagan parallels to them, allegedly. Now, this list could easily be added to, but the point is that it is often alleged that many pagan cultures previously believed in all kinds of things that sound somewhat similar to various beliefs held later on by the Jews or Christians. Does this mean that these things are pagan? Of course not. In the same way, under closer inspection of the so-called similarities between the Christian Trinity and the so-called pagan trinities, alleged parallels do not hold up. Another thing to bear in mind is that we shouldn't be surprised if some vague similarities sometimes occur between the things of God and the pagan world, as Satan is the master counterfeiter, often seeking to copy what God does in some way. This is one of the very reasons why we have cults all claiming to be true Christianity and condemning all others. A biblical example of how Satan seeks to copy the things of God can be seen when Pharaoh's magicians sought to copy the miracles that God did through Moses in the book of Exodus, starting in chapter 7. Now Pharaoh's magicians were somewhat successful in copying some of the miracles of God up until Exodus chapter 8 verses 18 to 19 when they eventually had to admit defeat and were unable to copy the works of God. Satan and demonic beings, being ancient creatures, know that God is three in one, Father, Son and Spirit, and would no doubt seek to produce crude imitations of this in an attempt to mimic and mock God. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 14 records the words of Lucifer prior to his fall, quote, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High." End quote. 